are you guys? We're doing good. Good, good. Thank you so much for making time for me today. Just in case, can you hear us? Yeah, we're in the car. <laughs> no, but you guys We like moved to... some stuff around. <laughs> we made it work. No, I, I do appreciate it. Please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Simon Rasiopa. I'm one of the executive producers and showrunners. Uh, uh, I'm the executive producer, one of the executive producers, and the showrunner of The Boys Diabolical. I'm going to start off with the easy one, but in every panel we've had little kids come up to the microphone and say, is this appropriate for me? Can I watch this? So what is your target audience, would you say, for the Oh, my God. I don't episodes? have kids, so I probably want the wrong <laughs> person to ask this question. Everybody should see it. No. Uh, it's, it's mature in both language and content. I, I think parents should make their own decision about that, but definitely I would I would not say it is not a kid's cartoon. Absolutely. Uh, you know? Laser baby. It's like Looney Tunes <laughs> for the next generation. Yeah. You know? yeah, there's probably actually, like, if the kids are really young, like one or two, it's probably fine. Exactly. You know? then, then there's a dangerous age, and then, it, and then it's fine again. So. Can you talk a little bit about getting Simon Pegg to come on board to voice Huey, finally? Sure. Famously, he's drawn after him, but has not been able to play him in the show. Well, yeah, so... Uh, when we were putting the episode together, so that Garth Innes wrote that episode, and the idea always was to make it a Garth's version of the boys, not Eric. So Eric, obviously, Eric Kripke developed the series for the live action series. It's that's his interpretation of the boys. We wanted to do Garth's interpretation of the boys, which is where it came from. Uh, so if you've read the original comic books, you know the character of Huey looks like Simon Pegg, mm -hmm. was based on Simon, like Derek Robertson, who does the art, like has come out and had conversations with Simon Pegg. Like Simon Pegg is aware it's based on him. <laughs> right. uh, so, uh, and obviously Simon is a friend of the show because he appears. In, he plays his father. Exactly, on the right. So it was a no, it was just a no brainer. We were like, so much so that we were like, if Simon can't do this for schedule reasons, we will take the character out of the episode for sure. We weren't going to have anybody else play We Huey in our show. Luckily, when we talked to him, he was like, are you kidding? Absolutely, I will do that. Right and it was just scheduling. Uh, and then he we sent a, he was in uh, outside of London at his home. We sent a studio uh, uh, record session, like uh, a remote group that went up there, installs a little, because it was deep pandemic, that... They come into your room and they set up a microphone and blankets and stuff, and then they leave, and then you wait for 15 minutes, and then Simon Pegg can come in and record safely. Uh, wow, and he that's was, great. yeah, yeah, it was the only way to do it safely back then. Uh, and he was just so happy and so great to work with because he was like, I thought I would never get a chance to play this character because I'm too old now. And he's oh. like, This is my chance to do it. So. Awesome. Uh, so he was uh, amazing. So yeah, it's great. Did any other voice cast members say, "I gotta come on and do this person or this person"? Uh, Jason Isaacs, who played uh, Butcher, uh, Billy Butcher in Garth's version as well, was really excited about playing that because he was super familiar with the books. Mm -hmm. uh, had, was Carl not available? Or? Uh, Carl was not available, unfortunately, at the time. Uh, which was yeah, which is a uh, you know because he was our. We were going to have Carl do it, but unfortunately there was uh, some issues came up uh, scheduling-wise, so we couldn't. We had a very, very tight schedule on our show, so we couldn't afford to wait very long if someone wasn't available. Uh, so we had Jason Isaacs came in, and who had, I think at some point, someone had brought him to comics and was being, uh, had been like, you need to play. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you on the page. Right. So when we came to him he was like are you kidding absolutely i will do this again and That's awesome. he was great and he was and he was just like i've got this no problem because we're like well the character's kind of he's like i know and then he would just do it and we we're like yes exactly perfect the perfect south london cockney accent because that's where he grew up so did any other actors reach out to you to participate in the show? Uh, well, there were, we had some actors we knew were fans of the boys. Uh, so the Mothership show, we call it the main show, the Mothership, um, uh, had people who had been talking to them who wanted to be on the show. So like uh, Kamel Nanjiani, we knew was a huge fan of the show and had been asking about getting involved in it some way. So we reached out to him and his wife, Emily Gordon, and they were like, yeah, of course. We'd love to be involved. So usually we went out to our to our acts. We have a great casting director, Linda LaMontagne, who was excellent at just like being, uh, at, at approaching actors and giving us lists of people who she knew either were interested in the show or would be right for the roles. Uh, so yeah, it was just a matter of working with her. You built, you're essentially, you guys are essentially starting to build a, uh, an MCU like universe. The VCU. The, the VOD CU. The VCU. The, the VOD cinematic universe. Um, what kind of other projects for styles? Um, when we were talking to John Carlo, he mentioned that he looked at it as people were talking about it like the Animatrix. What kind of other stories would you want to tell in this sort of format? Because you, you have such a broad variety in the episodes. Yeah, well, I kind of see Diabolical, like if we were lucky enough to get a second season, to be like a grab bag of like.
like different different aspects that you wouldn't see in the Mothership show. So we don't want to either repeat anything from the Mothership show, and we don't want to repeat anything we've already done in season one. It has to be new, new material. I think it'd be great to do some international stuff. Uh, obviously, The Boys is set in New York, uh, but Vought has its tentacles around the world. So there's stuff happening in Asia. There's stuff happening in Australia. You know, there's stuff happening in Russia. It'd be great to do a Vought like what is what's happening in the rest of the world during. Uh, the Mothership show when we're just seeing what's happening with Homelander and the crew of the 70s. It does sound like fun. So you're asking, what if is ha what if something else is happening in another? Uh, I see yeah, we would, just, we would call it maybe, because what if I think is trademark. Maybe we, we could be like, <laughs> what else? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, so I it's a whole. Uh, sorry, go ahead. It's a whole series of episodes, and each one has a different stone, a tone and style and everything. You can't obviously say which one is a favorite because mm. you're not supposed to. But thank um, you, thank you, by the way, for recognizing that. Everyone's like, which one's your favorite? I'm like, I love them all. Well, no, which one would you say you had the most fun doing? Oh my God, that's well. So I wrote the last one, and obviously there's a lot of fun writing an episode yeah. too. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. But I would say the most fun one was probably Aquafina's episode, which I I know is a very divisive episode. Some people love it, some people absolutely hate it. But uh, putting together like the soundtrack for that. Uh, we commissioned an original uh, Japanese pop song for that episode. Oh, that's super so, cool. Yeah, so that was really Who was fun. The artist? Uh, so the two, we had two composers, uh, Zach, uh, Leo Brandenburg, and Zach Rosen. The two, they were the two composers from Cobra Kai, and uh, Zach and Leo, and they were unbelievably incredible on the show. They like, we know exactly the kind of tone you want. We know what we, what, what you need for this episode. They came on board, pitched us some music. We're like, yes. Uh, and then the director for that episode, uh, uh, Maddie Flores, Madeline Flores, uh, also was a big fan of like Japanese pop music. So she introduced a couple of bands. She was like, it would be great if we could get this band called Ni Cry Talkie. And they're a Japanese pop band and we license their music and they're in the show. So that one was really fun putting it together because I learned a lot on that, that of, of sort of other artists that were not normally in my purview. So, yeah. That's serendipitous. That's great. Yeah. Let's just do one more question if we can. If you, you had said that you, you know, kind of wanted to do a second season, of course. Yeah. Have you got ideas already for those? And are, were there ones lingering from this one that didn't make it in? So funny enough, there weren't a lot of ideas lingering because what we did is when we knew we were going to do eight of them, we started going out to the eight writers, like Annie Sandberg and, you know, the Glazers and everything like that. So we just started filling up those slots one by one, and we stopped when we when we had eight. Mm. Uh, so there weren't, like, lost episodes or things we started, episodes we started working on that we didn't do. Like, you, on a normal traditional television show you might do that because you're coming up with ideas for episodes this was really like you're doing an episode okay so you're doing that one now and we just mm -hmm. set that and we did that eight times um but season two i think i'd love to do just expand it even more i'd like i'd like to do some live action episodes i'd like to do uh every i don't want to repeat ourselves that's the biggest thing so i want it to be brand new no repetition mm -hmm. and stuff that you haven't seen anywhere else so that's here's kind of uh, here's to a petition for the boys international yes. exactly yes. right it's not a bad idea yeah yes. exactly really quick bonus yeah are we getting a crossover with rick and morty now that you've brought justin <laughs> roiland into the fold that would be oh amazing I'd have to, I'd have to figure butcher and rick and morty you know, I, just, you know. I mean we kind of did it it's pretty rick and morty right it's so, great uh, thank, thank you, so you everyone thank you, thank you so much <laughs>